Hello and welcome to the channel dedicated to helping you navigate the exciting world of private equity real estate. My name is Eric Wilson. I'm a real estate fund manager with a passion for helping investors achieve their goals through informed investment decisions. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about conducting due diligence on private equity real estate opportunities. Now, the first step in conducting due diligence is to understand the investment strategy behind the opportunity. So this is really the sniff test to see if it's worth pursuing this deal any further. Does it align with your investment goals, your risk appetite? This is understanding the type of real estate that you're investing in, the geographic location, the targeted returns, and the risk profile that the strategy is incorporating. So this is really, like I said, the sniff test. This is making sure that it aligns with what your goals are for your real estate allocation. If it doesn't meet those goals, then it's not worth looking any further. Maybe talk to the manager so that you can see what type of opportunities they have coming down the line. But this is really, we're talking about this individual deal. So at this point, you can move on to the next opportunity. There's tons of opportunities out there. First step, understand the investment strategy. Now the next step is to evaluate the sponsor or the manager of this opportunity. Now this is critical to the success of any opportunity, whether it's a syndication or a fund that you're looking at investing in, the manager or sponsor is critical, absolutely critical for the success of any real estate project. You're trusting this manager with your capital to do the right thing with this property. Remember, you're, an, you're a passive investor in this deal. Once you put your capital with this sponsor, it's primarily up to them to decide when to liquidate, what sort of property management to put on the property, what sort of major management decisions is this manager gonna make. So how do you get comfortable with a manager? Well, you gotta start by looking at their track record. What type of deals have they done in the past? How have those deals performed? If you can talk to a current and, and past investor, that's even better. Um, hearing it from people who have actually worked with this manager. I wouldn't recommend talking to an investor that the fund manager asks you to talk to. I'd like to try to talk to a manager, to someone who works with that manager, but isn't handed to me by that manager. You know what I'm saying? So you wanna understand the stability of their team. How is this manager capitalized? Are they tight on cash? Is it a big team? Is it a small team? How are they operating as a company? You're evaluating them as a company, as a manager. Their past performance is critical, but understanding the manager is critical to the success of any real estate opportunity. So that I would say is the most important uh, piece of the puzzle. Once you figure out the investment strategy makes sense for you, understanding who the sponsor is, what their track record has been, and getting the, the confidence that they can execute the business plan that they've put in front of you, that is the most critical piece of conducting your due diligence. Now, once you get comfortable with the manager, it's time to request access to the PPM, or Private Placement Memorandum. And this can be a very lengthy document. 150 pages is not uncommon. It's a detailed legal document. It explains the investment strategy. It explains the underlying assets that you're investing in. Um, it explains oftentimes um, about the manager, their track record, their experience the financials of the investment that you're investing in. This is really what you are investing in, this PPM. This is the offering that they're putting in front of you and saying, we're gonna hold up our end, put your capital into this deal, we're gonna do this within this legal document. It's a good thing to walk through with your attorney, especially if it's your first time investing in any deal like this. They're scary documents, to be frank. If you read the fine print of any of these documents, the manager has a lot of flexibility to do what they choose with your investment capital. So it's important to get comfortable with the sponsor, um, walk through the PPM with your legal attorney, and then ask questions. Ask questions with any, any manager that's worth um, their salt is gonna be open to answering all of your questions. It'd be a major, major red flag if the manager isn't willing to sit down with you and talk about the investment that you're about to put your capital towards. This is a, this is a major decision. It's not one that should be taken lightly, um, whether it's your first time or your 50th time, you should always read the PPM, understand the tax implications, the legal implications. That's where all this information is contained. Talk it through with your uh, fund manager, with your legal team. Like I said, this is what you are investing into, so the importance cannot be overstated. Understand what you're investing in. While you're going through the PPM, it's also important to understand and evaluate the financials of the investment. So in the PPM, um, there's gonna be some material that mentions the financials, um, depending on the type of investment that you're putting into. But very often, the manager will have an accompanying uh, pro forma or a series of pro formas if they're uh, you know, working in a fund strategy. 
Um, that pro forma can get updated regularly. So that's something that you would want to look at. I wouldn't necessarily just look at the financials from a PDF document. There are a lot of investors that do. If you're working with a smaller investor especially, ask for their underlying underwriting, ask for their pro forma. You can usually get that in the form of an Excel document. And then you can kind of see how this thing's operating. Even if you're not an Excel pro, the fact that they're giving it to you, um, that shows a level of confidence that they're not doing anything funky with the numbers. Take it a step further, sit down with someone who does know how to understand these pro formas. I'll do plenty of videos in the future on um, you know, what to look for on these metrics, the IRR, the equity multiple. But you know, after you get comfortable with what these metrics mean and what you should be looking for, you might see something that's just like, whoa, this makes absolutely no sense. If once you start getting 20 plus IRRs, it's very likely that the manager simply, they may not know what they're doing when they're putting numbers in front of you. They may think that they're doing their math correct. You might catch them doing something that, you know, is just wrong. You don't want to get into a situation where you feel like they are deliberately misguiding you with the investment. That is a major red flag. You walk away immediately. It's on to the next manager. But you know, that that's those cases are far and few between. You know, with with most cases, I think most people have um, pretty good integrity. So no one's, you know, not many people are out there trying to hurt other investors, but it's just something that, especially if it's your first time working with this manager, you really want to take the numbers and trust but verify. Take their numbers, plug it into your own model, and really, really get a sense for what this opportunity could do. Don't work with someone that's going to overpromise and under under deliver. You want to work with someone that's showing you some downside cases. Every good manager wants to under promise and over deliver. So you should have that mindset when you go and look at these financials. Are they promising the world to me or are they being realistic with these numbers? It's like, okay, that's feasible. That's almost like a, um, a sense that you can get by when you're looking at these uh, financials. Are they being ridiculous or does this seem in line? After getting comfortable with the sponsor, reading through the PPM, looking at the financials, and things kind of are checking your boxes along the way, it's really critical to consider any sort of tax implications before making any investment. And this is something you should not do yourself. This is something that you should sit down with your CPA, um, your accounting team, and you should really consider tax implications for whether you're investing as a business, whether you're investing as an individual, you should understand the tax implications of the investment itself. Are they expecting any depreciation? Are they expecting any losses? What sort of income are they gonna be producing off of this investment? And then how is that gonna impact your personal finances? Does this tax strategy align with your personal tax strategy? You know, at the end of every every year, uh, investor uh, investment company has to issue a Schedule K-1 to you. That Schedule K-1, you hand it over to your accountant, your um, legal team, they know what to do with those documents. I wouldn't recommend anyone do their own personal taxes. Um, I would recommend always having your legal team review the financials with you. This is a great opportunity when you're going through the PPM with your legal team, have your attorney sitting there with you. Go through it with them. Uh, make sure that your attorney and your accountant are in line and that everyone understands the implications on the upside, on the downside of this potential investment and making sure that it's a good good risk mitigated decision for you as an investor. So I've kind of touched on a few potential red flags with any sponsor, inconsistent financials for one. You look at one document, it says something, and then another, another document has different assumptions, different return profiles. What's going on there? You know, why are they showing you multiple documents with different financial projections? If it's a sensitivity analysis, so they're showing you an upside case, um, a base case and a downside case, that makes sense. That's something that a good manager would do. But if their financials are all over the place in different documents, red flag, ask them first, what's going on here? Why is it like this? They might have an explanation, but if they don't, that's something that you're gonna wanna probably walk away from. If the manager doesn't have extensive experience, if this is their first deal, you know, that could be a red flag. It's, I wouldn't recommend investing on anyone's first deal. Yeah, every real estate op operator has to start somewhere, but they have to work with alongside other managers first, in my opinion. I didn't start with one deal and say, okay, everyone, I'm gonna like trust me with your money. Let's go do this real estate deal. I worked for other fund managers. I worked with people who had 20 plus years of experience ahead of me. There's no way that I would have trusted myself um, if I was 
creating my first fund or my first investment. I would have been a kid that had no experience, had a good idea, but didn't know how to execute. You have to have some scars, you have to have some experience to be a good fund manager, to be a good real estate operator. Um, you have to see some stuff out there in the real world, not just in the textbooks. That's a, that's a major red flag if uh, the manager doesn't have that sort of experience, if they can't point to times where they've had major wins, and also they've maybe had some losses. A good fund manager will tell you when they've had their losses, when they've had troubles with an asset. Ask them, what's been, what's been your hardest challenge as an operator? You know, what's been your um, worst performing deal? Ask them how they've navigated those challenges. Have they been through a down market? These are important questions. Um, if they can't answer those questions, that'd be a red flag. If they're not transparent in their questions, if they're kind of dancing around it, that's a red flag. Um, transparency is something I look for when I'm investing in other operators, first and foremost. You know, I wanna, I wanna work with someone that's gonna tell me immediately if something is going wrong. It's okay, like something, some things happen. This is real estate, anything can happen but I wanna know about it right away. Ask them about what their past reporting has looked like. If they're not willing to give you what their past investor reports have been, that's a red flag. Every manager should have a standard format of how they're reporting to you, whatever their um, regular reporting system is, whether it's a monthly report, a quarterly report, look for their annual reports. Um, what's their communication gonna be like once you invest? A lot of managers can be um, really great and communicative, up until the point that you invest. It's really the, the difference is made from the point that you invest throughout the life of the investment. That's when you really start to see if you're gonna invest with this operator again in the future, um, what that experience is gonna be like. So transparency, if they're not transparent, big red flag. So evaluating the sponsor, understanding the PPM, evaluating the financials, understanding any tax implications of the investment, and looking out for any red flags. These are the basic due diligence items that you should be conducting when looking at any private equity real estate opportunity. Like I said, these are the basics. I will go into more detail on what sections of a PPM you should really be looking at, um, what financial metrics you should be looking at, what understanding, how can you run your own numbers in your own model, all, all sorts of things that I wanna cover in this channel to help you make more educated decisions. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are enjoying this channel and I will see you in the next video.